Welcome on over to Automotive World, everyone. I'm your host, Vinny Mystery, and tonight, very similar to Ford. Number two was Chrysler for recalls this year at 36 recalls with about 2.2 million vehicles affected, obviously under the Stellantis umbrella. And we have here Stellantis CEO Carlos Tavares, very similar to what's happening with Ford. Ram trucks are needing repairs right off the production line, and there's too many of them. And this this is bad because Stellantis is in a bad place. We've covered their financials. We've got stories we're doing now. Stellantis is interested in selling some of a lot of their brands actually that are unprofitable, which is honestly most of their brands are unprofitable. But very similar to Ford. Um, Dodge and Ram have always kind of had issues. They've always had uh, stigmas. And Stellantis is seeing that they're at a point where the quality of their vehicles is not there. Uh, they're, you know, citing that too many vehicles are coming off the assembly line broken, not optimal, not working, not, you know, performing in the way that they should. Um, a lot of, you know, they talk about it here. A lot of models sitting on dealer lots, you know. Uh, the interruptions they've had in the supply chain the time all the times they've had to change suppliers citing quality issues beyond factories sales being down 18 percent i think a lot of people obviously just you know wanting to go elsewhere not finding interest in the brands and the models uh, we know especially with Ram when it you know used to be Dodge and Dodge is going through a whole thing. I mean, you know, Dodge is getting rid of muscle cars. Chrysler's only got one car left. It's a minivan. Stellantis is and we've talked about this, you know, with the slower production, the quality issues that they've had. And just ultimately being, you know, Stellantis brand essentially being second in recalls. Too many trucks needing repairs off the production line. Too many trucks are arriving off the production line to dealers broken, dead, dead on arrival, dead before arrival, dead before even birth. This, this is not good. Especially when you're Stellantis. When you're Stellantis and we'll cover it here. It's hinting at selling Maserati. Maserati, which in my opinion has always been an interesting brand, but a, a troubled brand. Kind of been always like the poor man's Ferrari, poor man's Jaguar sales over 50% dropped, which we've covered. Uh, Maserati always famously, famously known for the reliability. Just, wow. Uh, when you look at all those things, Stellantis, and we've talked about it, they're not bringing in a profit. Stellantis is in trouble. The automotive world is talking about it. Taking on bad investments wanting to sell Maserati, and I get why. The cars aren't good, they're not reliable, they cost a lot of money, nobody is interested in the brand. It's, it's bleeding money. Just as Chrysler is bleeding the money, just as, you know, other brands, Citroen, so many brands that are just bleeding and or have bled money for Stellantis. And Stellantis even at a point where it's time maybe to get rid of Fiat. 
14 companies that they have under their umbrella. And most of those companies not making money. Fiat, not making money, especially here in America. Fiat has no presence again. And they tried in the mid-2000s to get Fiat back. And you look at the Fiat 500e. It's expensive. It's not practical. It has less range and less capability than other EVs that were essentially still being sold from development that was over 10 plus years ago. I mean, you look at it here, which one of these brands under Stellantis is going to go? Is it Maserati? Is it Jeep? Lancia? Opal? Vauxhall? Peugeot? Abarth? Ram? Alfa Romeo? I mean, you look at it. And if you're Stellantis, when you see that, hey, too many trucks are coming off the production line, broken. Let's look at the rest of these automakers. Now you tell me, of all the brands that Stellantis owns, and I'm not trying to talk crap or nothing, but I'm being honest. Let's be honest. And if Stellantis wants to disagree with this video, go ahead. But we have all the evidence. It's This has been an issue for years that we have seen. Which one of these brands under the Stellantis umbrella, even including Alfa Romeo and Maserati, which one of these brands spells reliability to you? Which ones do it? Dodge doesn't do it. Ram doesn't do it. Jeep doesn't do it. Chrysler certainly doesn't do it. Certainly, probably Alfa Romeo and Maserati are the two worst defenders of this list here. Uh, Fiat doesn't do it. Citroen? Persia? Opal? Vauxhall? Abarth? Lancia? I mean, Lancia, a former shell of what they used to be? DS? They talk about it here. Unprofitable brands will be discontinued if they don't make money. And we have been over their financials. Most of their brands don't make money. What are they going to do? Shut down everything? It, it really, it, it sucks to say this because Stellantis is a big company. They, as, as said in the article here by Adrian, they're an automotive juggernaut. Stellantis is a big brand, and they own brands that are famous. I mean, I mean, Lancia, like I said, is a former shell of what they used to be, but they own brands here that have a name and that have some equity. I mean, Maserati still has a name. I mean, Alfa Romeo still has that, you know, has that magic in the name. Jeep, world famous. Chrysler, Dodge, Ram, Abarth. I mean, these are famous, famous like brands. And it just sucks to see as a, you know, what they've become. But it's also kind of expected. Just like when Mazda was with Ford. Mazda was a great company. Ford started to mess it up. Ford sold Mazda, and Mazda's become better than ever. We've, we've seen this collaboration many times, and it's like they say. You know, there's a lot of famous things, but it's one they always say. Uh, the people and the friends that you make and the people you hang out with and associate yourself with is more than likely who you'll end up becoming. If you hang out and you associate with you know, hardworking people, people who are grinding, making an effort, you'll see them, you want to be like them, you might feel like you're not what they are, and you'll aspire to be like them, hang out with drug dealers, drug dealers, you'll probably end up a drug dealer, in this case, we've got about 14 different brands, so many automotive brands, all that are Let's be honest, pretty dang unreliable, and most of these brands here are actually quite famous for it. 
two of these brands in specific. It's the number one thing they're known for. They're on reliability. It sucks, but it's expected. You hang out with an unreliable crown, you're gonna end up turning out like that. So then this isn't the only one that's in this position. But I will say this, we covered the Ford story. Ford has a lot more recalls by one, they have a lot more units affected by one. Here's the difference though, Ford still makes money. People still have interest in Ford and they make good practical vehicles. Ford is still strong as a company. They still have people interested and in wanting to buy Ford. Because even though Ford's maybe in a similar situation, Ford knows how to make a vehicle. So when you look at the Stellantis brands, a lot of these brands from Stellantis, like Chrysler and Fiat, literally sell one car. An automotive brand, one car, one model. Stellantis is in trouble. The quality of the vehicles aren't good. Nobody's interested in them. They're unreliable. Most of them only sell maybe one model. So I think this has more than just reliability to worry about. They have to worry about, holy crap, do we even make cars anymore? Do we even make cars people want anymore? Are people even interested in us anymore? That's the difference between where Stellantis and Ford are. Ford has potential. People still want F-Series trucks. People will still buy a Ford. People still find a Ford worth it. Ford is still a strong company. Stellantis? I don't want to say it, but I'm going to say it. It's not good. The brink... It, Stellantis right now is in a situation like Acura. On the brink of collapse. Luckily for Acura, they've got Honda to bail them out. For Stellantis? Stellantis. You got no one to bail you out. <laughs> Nobody. And they've already made it clear. And I can't blame Carlos Tavares for saying this because that's how business is and that it's the right thing to say. You have to do that. If something is unprofitable, you have to stop. You have to stop the bleeding and you have to shut it down. But the problem is that which one of those brands are profitable? It's not looking good. There's no need to hash this out any further. We can already see what's going on. We can already see operating income as they talk about here plummeted 40% in the North American market. Net revenues down 14% while net profit decreased 48%. So for those of you Stellantis fans who think I'm just trying to take a, a dump on Stellantis, I'm not trying to. I'm just presenting the news. Stellantis has been taking a dump on themselves for quite a while. The difference is no, now though, Stellantis is in a position where before they at least were profitable and they were promising. Even Ram, which was really what was backpacking them. And now even that's at feet. It's gonna do it for now, everyone. Let me know what you guys are going down below. If you are a Stellantis owner, even if you're not in North America, let me know what you think of this news. If you have a vehicle from them, are you happy with it? Did you get rid of it? What happened? I want to know. It's going to do it for now. Thanks for watching, everyone.